Are there any clarifications for either members? Yes, Mr. Pritam Singh. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Just a qu quick clarification for the leader. Uh, on the status of uh, Mr. S. Ishwaran's uh, responsibilities as a member of parliament, I asked him uh, two questions specifically on his access to MPAS, for example, his access to government buildings, including parliament. Um, uh, can the leader please uh, clarify that situation? Thank you. Sorry, um, I just want to make sure I have the question correct. One was access to government buildings, and the other was. Can I tr can I trouble uh, the Mr. Singh to repeat the question? Mr. Pritam Singh. Uh, the the other question was access to the uh, PSD's MPAS system, the Member of Parliament Appeal System. Essentially, just to confirm whether the minister is still performing his rules and duties on the ground as a member of parliament looking after his constituents? Because I think the key issue here is, is he effectively suspended as an MP as well? I, th I thank the member for his uh, clarification. Uh, first, it is important to remember that there is a distinction between Mr. Iswaran's role as a minister and his role as an MP. As a minister, he was appointed by the prime minister. So he holds that position at the Prime Minister's pleasure. The Prime Minister, therefore, also has the ability to interdict him and to tell him to stop uh, carrying out duties as Minister whilst he's under investigation. That's because his appointment flowed or came from the Prime Minister. That, as I understand it, and the, uh, if, if I'm incorrect, my, my colleagues will set out the correct position, but, but that interdiction include a direction that he should not be allowed access to all government buildings. That flows from the ministerial position. And that obviously is because you're under investigation and you don't want to prejudice the investigation. Then there is the issue of Mr. Iswaran's status as an MP. Mr. Iswaran's status as an MP was not by appointment by the Prime Minister or otherwise. He was elected. He was elected by the constituents of West Coast GRC. His mandate comes from them. And you can only sus suspend or take away his ability to act as an MP in accordance with the PPIPA. And I have taken members through those provisions. So in, in other words, currently, if he, because he's not suspended, if Mr. Iswaran wanted to come today and enter parliament, he can because he is a member of parliament. But as a matter of party discipline, he has been requested by the prime minister to also cease his MP duties because you can imagine how difficult it is to carry out your MP duties when you're under investigation or even to come to parliament. Imagine if he was sitting here and somebody were to ask him about the investigation, what, what's he going to say? I mean, the investigative authorities are listening to this. This is a public matter. He might end up jeopardizing his, his own case. So as a matter of party discipline and good order, he has been asked to stay away. And at least to his credit, he has complied with that, even though he is entitled to, to come in as an MP. And that is why I think I should also clarify something which was said earlier um, by Ms. Poir which I think I have just clarified by my explanation, but I, I think Ms. Poir said something to the effect of Mr. Swaran being suspended by the, the PM. Did, did, did Ms. Poir say that? But it, anyway, the, the, the direction to stop work as a minister, the interdiction comes from the PM in his capacity as PM to Mr. Minister, Mr. Swaran, his capacity as a minister. Uh, insofar as not carrying out MP duties and going on leave of absence, that is something which is requested by the Prime Minister as a matter of party discipline. Mr. Iswaran could come to Parliament if he wants to, but he has not done so because he has listened or to, to what he has been asked to do. So leave of absence and not being able to perform MP duties is quite different from suspension. Suspension is as provided for under the Act and certain criterion and, and thresholds have to be met. 
and um, let me see. And I think the, the only, yes, I think th that, that was the clarification I wanted to make. Indeed, if I can add on, when I approve your leave of absence from Parliament, you could still uh, turn up in Parliament. Mr. Vikram, now you raise your hand as well. I, I just raised my hands because Ms. Poir had asked me a question of what I thought of Mr. Ishwaran's suspension, but I think the leader has addressed that. Yeah. Any other clarifications for either Minister Indrani or Ms. Poir? Uh, Ms. Kerry Tan. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I, I feel compelled to speak and seek, clarif seek clarification from Ms. Hazel Pua as to what is her purpose and intent in comparing this amount of allowance that's still being paid until a verdict has been reached on Ms. Minister Isoran's case with the payouts from Comcare because I, I believe Ms. Poir, as an ex-public servant, she knows very well that these are budgets that are completely separate from each other. And it doesn't mean that simply because you suspend an NP, that money is going to go to some further Comcare applications. So I would like to clarify, what is the intention in bringing up this analogy? Ms. Poir? Uh, we're talking about uh, government's financial resources. Uh, if it is not paid, it will actually be still within government coffers that can be redirected elsewhere. Mr. Leong Manwai? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I have one clarification for the leader. Uh, the purpose of PSP raising this motion is actually to ensure that we are consistent uh, in terms of when we are advocating high salaries for our public office holders. So when there's a case that we also have to ensure, because we, we are advocating the high salaries will lead to corruption-free. So when we also have, when we, after we have established that, we also have to ensure that the high salaries goes to deserving people. So in this case, I'm uh, uh, interested in what the leader has said towards the end of her uh, cl um, uh, closing speech just now. The leader mentioned about the possibility of clawback, and we have also recommended payback. The problem of our legislative uh, of our legislation today is that it doesn't provide for clawback or payback of the high salaries that we are paying our public office holders. So if the leader can confirm that we are going to have a bill in the future to ensure that that legislation is also in place, then I think PSP can actually reconsider many of our positions with regards to this motion. Thank you. Can yeah, please go. Minister Indrani. I thank Mr. Leong Mamwai for his clarification. So, as I well, first he says that it's he is concerned about the the, the salaries and of course what would happen in the case when somebody is not performing. Well, as I said earlier. If a certain threshold has been met, if it was warranted, then we would consider having a clawback. Now, how that is to be affected remains to be seen, because as explained today, the law as it currently is doesn't allow for it. This does not, however, uh, preclude the Prime Minister from, as a matter of party discipline, requiring it, and if Mrs. Warren acceded to that, then there is actually nothing more to be done if it warranted it. So to ask me now, can I confirm that we will have a bill or something to amend? My answer is wait and see what the outcome of the investigation is because such a bill may not be necessary. 
What I can assure members of is that at least on our side, the party side, we will do what is right and what is fair, having regard to the circumstances. That assurance, I think, I can give. Any other clarifications from members?